Great. So as I usually say to my, uh, my students, hi, my name is Mr. Snyder. I come from California. And yeah, I do most stuff in English. Um, I teach programming. Uh, today, we're going to look at some programming in Python. We're going to do a little workshop. I'm going to give you a link where you can create an account. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of follow along with me. Um, Carolina, we had, was it until, how much time did we have? Uh, I think we said until 10. Okay. So yeah. I think, so I think we can take a bit more time if you need it. Well, I think what we'll do is um, now in the beginning for maybe the first like 15, 20 minutes, we'll do some stuff together. And then I'll be here um, if you have questions or um, so that you can kind of uh, like write your own code because me writing code is not really the, the focus of doing this today. The code should be for, uh, yeah, the focus should be everybody else for, for writing code. So here's a link to a website. It's called academy.cs.cmu.edu. If you click on this, you can make an account with a username, any name you like. It doesn't have to be your real name. It actually shouldn't be your real name. Um, so if you have any funny Twitter or Instagram handle that you want to use, um, you make a username and a password. I can even show you if I can, I think I should be able to screen share here. Great. So here I take the link into a web browser. I'm going to use Firefox. I can make my username student Coolio. I can make a, a super secure password. And then I should be able to click sign up. And I need to make sure that I'm in the student, uh, the student uh, flick here. Huh. This happens to not be working for me for a second. Let me see if I can do this again. Oh, no, now it works. Uh, so the first thing that I'll do is um, they have a terms and conditions use. This is a resource for uh, high school teachers for teaching programming for their students. A lot of the stuff in the terms of agreements is that students won't cheat and won't share solution, solutions with each other. So if you scroll to the bottom and you take my word for it that this is a normal um, yeah, uh, teaching resource, we can click agree. And then we wind up in this main menu where I can see the uh, uh, lots of links. And the first one is getting started uh, 1.11. Let me go to the chat. And I think in, in Zoom, you can do, can you do feedback on the, um, on the things that people write in the chat? Can you do like thumbs up? Uh, I think so. Or you can just do a thumbs up in the chat. Yeah. You can do it as a reaction on your screen in Zoom as well. Oh, OK. So if, it, if it's taking a second to, uh, to make an account, um, give me a thumbs up when you've made the account and then we'll, uh, we'll continue. And you're following along as well, right, Carolina? Yeah. Okay, great, good. So then you can, uh, you, you can also give me a thumb, there, there we go. One thing that I've found out from, uh... okay. One thing I found out from um, doing these uh, things like this is it's really nice to make a history in the chat. Um, so you can say something like make an account from the link above 
So if people join in, they can kind of scan the chat if they if they get the chat when they join, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions or if you have any problems, just write in the um, write in the chat or if you want me to go a little bit slower or if you want me to go slower or faster. Um, what I'll do now is we'll, we'll work together and we'll write some code. We're going to be writing code in Python. Uh, we're going to go through the first two of these lessons, and then you'll have some time to do these uh, do practice exercises. Um, this resource that you've made now, I can give a little bit of an overview. It has four parts. Right now, the only one that you can, the one that you can start with is this first one called Drawing Shapes. But later, um, if you continue with this, you'll be able to do animations, which is going to be moving shapes around the screen. If you continue with that, you'll be able to do things like moving the mouse around and being able to type into the keyboard to have user interactions. And then in the end, we'll, you will even be able to make like simple games, kind of like um, you know, Space Invaders, where you have a little uh, ship and then you can shoot the stars and things. Um, so this resource is completely self-driven. So throughout the week, you'll be able to come in here, log in, uh, make progress, uh, work on exercises, work on your own uh, like small creative projects. And if you have any problems or any questions, you can write in the, the Discord and I can, uh, yeah, me and Carolina will be checking to see if you have any like specific errors or maybe you need help like uh, thinking of how to do something. And so we'll be support uh, throughout the week with this resource. And if you want to take it um, kind of day by day, I think that maybe each one of these sections you could do in a day. So maybe today would be focusing on, uh, you know, just this first section about um, getting started, working with stars and colors, uh, rectangles and opacity. Uh, we'll go over what that means. Um, yeah, in different shapes and things. And then at the end here, you have two creative projects where you can make your own uh, your own idea, your own landscape, your own scene. Um, and maybe I can show some examples of that at the end. So if we open this up to drawing shapes, 1.1, lesson one, getting started, and then 1.1.1, we'll, uh, great. We'll get to this first page. So welcome to CS0. Here you will learn the basics of coding by drawing images, creating animations, and making games. Let's jump right into learning how to draw a shape. Drawing a circle. Press the green run button to see the circle appear. Here we have a little section with some lines of code, one and two. This is a code snippet. If we hit this run, we'll wind up with the, uh, the canvas that we'll be able to see. So here on the left side, we have a console. We don't have to worry about that. It's not important right now. But on the right side, um, we see we have a circle. And particularly, the code we wrote is circle, capital with a capital C, a parenthesis, 200, comma, 200, comma, 150. So we wrote this code, and Python drew a circle in the box. That's, that's pretty cool. That's how programming can work. That code uses the numbers 200 and 150, and we can use different numbers to get different circles. So here, if we run another piece of code, which is 250, 350, and we click run, we see we wind up with a smaller circle, kind of more in the bottom right-hand side of the canvas. So that's great. So the numbers change the circle, but what do they mean? Let's try changing them in the program to figure out, to figure it out. Here, we have a little checkpoint and we can hit the purple start button and read the instructions that say, click and drag the green shapes with the star to change the circle. Make sure, make the code at the top look like this. So we're trying to match, we're trying to make a circle that is 275, 215, and 120. And if we move these, green stars around, we see that we can change the numbers of where the circle is, both at the top here and here at the bottom.
So I'll give you a, I'll give you a little bit of time to play with this. And if you get to about the right circle, it doesn't have to be exactly right, but you'll see a, a green click to proceed button here. Do you manage it, Carolina? Yeah. It was a bit tricky, though. Well, what did you have to do? Uh, it was just like figuring out the, ah, OK. Mm. And I think I know the answer to what we're doing, because I just did this in Scratch for the code, code camp for the kids. So yeah. I might so, know what this is. So where, where can I move this circle to, uh, to, get, to get the right numbers? Yeah, so uh, if you go down diagonally oh, okay. down. and out to the right. Okay, so as, as I move to the right, I'm making the first number go up, and that should go up to 275, about 274, and then 215. Oh, can it? Let me see if I can get it. Let me see if I can get it perfect. Oh, nice. Um, so now the first two numbers are locked. And now if I change this slider here on the bottom, I can change the size so I can get a smaller circle or I can have a bigger circle. Perfect. Great, so I hope that everybody gets through that. That's the first little checkpoint. Um, the way that, these, that this material works is you have to do the checkpoints to advance. So one of the things that you might have a problem with in the week is, oh, there's some checkpoint that's kind of hard. Um, and then you might have to write, hey, I need help on this, uh, on this exercise or this checkpoint because you won't be able to go further. Um, that's how this, this resource is built. So another checkpoint, what does changing the third number do when we create a circle? So as we saw in the example here, the, the third number was changing the size. So that's the first one is moves the circle up or down. No, change the circle's color. No, determines what makes, what number is in the middle of the circle. No, what makes the circle bigger or smaller is the correct one. So the third number is how big or small the circle is. You might even figure this out with, you might even figure out what the first and the second numbers do as well. So to, greet, to get a circle, a circle's three numbers are its center x, its center y, and its radius. So in circle 100, 250, center x is 100, center y is 200, the radius is 50. Center x and center y say where the circle is, the radius is how far the center of the circle is to the edge. So just like in math. A lot of people uh, talk about programming and mathematics. And in this resource, there's a lot of overlap for, um, yeah. There will be some things that you should, that maybe some of you will, will know from mathematics already, which is, yeah, which is just great. So, okay, but what is the difference between a center of 100 and a center X of 100 and a center X of 300? To better understand this, let's talk a little bit more about the canvas. The canvas is a box that our circles were drawn in. We're going to use x and y coordinates to talk about the places on the canvas. So as we see here, this, this is one of the things that some of you might uh, recognize from math, but this could be a little bit different from what you're used to. So a lot of times in math, we take 0, 0 at the bottom left corner. Here in graphics programming, um, and actually across all graphics programming, our origin is going to be the top left corner. So we're at zero, zero is the top left of the canvas, not the middle either. As X gets bigger, we're gonna to move to the right. As Y gets bigger, we're going to move down. This can be really challenging for students, usually in math and school. 
as y gets bigger, you go up. But when we do graphics programming, y is actually going to bring us south. And the whole canvas itself is a 400 by 400 square. So 400, 400 is the bottom right corner. So this image shows a canvas with some points labeled by their XY coordinates. And then we have 200, 200 in the middle. So here's another checkpoint. And this is, this one's a little bit challenging. We need to have four clicks in the right spot on the canvas. So step one of four, click near 200, 400. So if I start up here at zero, zero, I'm always going to go over first 200 and then down by whatever the Y value is. 400 should be somewhere around here. And all of these are going to be unique. So you're going to have a different number on your screen. So you need to account for what your instructions are and then click in the right place. Here I have 400, zero. 400 over, zero down, so I stay there. 400, 200. Great, I'm almost there. And you know, this can be this can be confusing. Sometimes if you wind up with uh, you know, bigger or smaller numbers, you can wind up clicking in the wrong place. If you click in the wrong place, it'll say you're too far away. You can try again. And then if you get a little even more confused and then you just click in a random place, it'll say, no, we're not there, but we'll have one more shot. And then if you're, you're still not sure, then you will get to uh, start over. So this is one of the, uh, the ways that we yeah, practice. Um, learning how the, where the points in the canvas are are going to be really helpful when we start programming because we're gonna wanna know where we're putting stuff. So zero, 200. 200, zero, Ooh. 400, 400, 400, 200. Did, did you get you through yours, Carolina? Yeah. Okay, good. And um, you're, you're my um, uh, canary to, to check to see <laughs> if, the, if the time is working. We actually got a question from Caroline. Oh, great. Uh, do you know why it's different with the coordinates? Yeah. Um, so this goes from <sighs> graphics programming, which started in like the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, you know, you can think of maybe like animated films like uh, Pixar and DreamWorks and things uh, pioneered a lot of uh, techniques with image manipulation. Um, and I, I know that the answer is historically, that's the way that all graphics programming works. So if you use any other programs like Photoshop or Paint, um, you'll always have zero, zero in the top right corner. Um, but that's really just because someone decided, decided it to be like that. Um, I mean, it could, could have been made any other way. Um, I talk a lot of, uh, in my programming classes, I talk a lot of stuff. I talk a lot about like things that were decided by people. Um, you know, you can make things in programming really any way you want. And what happens really often is one group of people will think, oh, this is a, the best way to do something. And then another group of people will think, how can you, how could you say that? This is obviously the better way of doing something, which could be completely backwards from the other. Um, and then you wind up with uh, different st standards, um, software that's not compatible with each other, uh, interfaces that don't work, um, graphics programmers with different skills because some people think uh, that you know uh, the top right corner should be zero zero, and other people think that the zero zero should be in the middle. Um, it's a little bit similar to um, how in like uh, yeah uh, Western languages we 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 read from right to left. And in like other places in um, like Arabic countries or Arabic languages, uh, they'll read from from right to left. And it's not that either way is better than the other, um, but it's really interesting to see like these, uh, yeah, just how, how different things can be. I would also like guess that it might have something to do with motion. 
uh, you never start a motion in the middle. You always like if you have a character, it has to come somewhere from. I don't know. It's just an educated guess, but I've done a couple of animation films and it feels like it has to come somewhere from, not from the middle. Mm. So I hope that that was an answer to the question. And thank you so much. If anything comes up in the chat, uh, tell me, because it's hard to keep an eye on, on, on it. So good job. Now we can understand how the first two numbers work, center X and center Y, say where we draw the circle. And we draw that circle on that point center X and center Y. Here's an image that shows a circle with its center coordinates and radius labeled. So here we have 200, 250, the point. So a little bit under the middle and then the radius of 150. So we're getting close to our first exercise, but before we get to our first kind of exercise where we're writing our first line of code, uh, we need to talk about errors. So what happens if we don't use three numbers to draw a circle? Let's find out. So here we have some code that says circle 100 comma 200 comma, and then just an empty, uh, then just a closing parenthesis here. If we run this, now we start to see some information in this console. And if I read this, it says star, 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 line break, star, 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 lots of more stars, line break, lots of more stars, line break. An error occurred. Here is the stack trace. Line one, circle 100, 200, exception arg count error circle takes three arguments center x center y and radius not two so this is a little bit of and the other ones I, I think are the same this is a little bit of computer programming ease of saying hey did you forget to put a number in there and it's trying really hard to say this, but it uses some phrases that are hard to understand or that we might not recognize, like stack trace, exception, argument. Um, usually, if you read this slowly, it can give you a hint as to what, what you need to do to fix the problem. It's not always perfect, and it might not always tell you exactly, but it should give you some indication. So Python tells us we didn't give enough information about the circle. Here are some rules to follow to avoid errors like this. Case matters. So circle with a capital C is not the same as circle with a lowercase c. This is something that's really challenging for beginning programmers to understand when, when the capitalization is important. Circle needs to have a center x center y and radius here we're actually using the names of these really what they are is variables center x center y and radius but when we program we don't write in center x we write in we write in the value so this can also be a little uh, a little challenging for programmers in the beginning to know that this this number here 100 the first number, well, we call that one center X. We call it center X because it's the first number. We call this center Y because it's the second number. We call this the radius because it's the third number. This will be a little bit different when we look at colors, but for now, this is the, the terminology that we use. And they need to be in, yeah, and they need to follow these rules. They must be in the right order. They must be inside parentheses and they must be separated by commas. So these commas here, oops. These commas that separate the numbers, I can even, if I zoom like this, does, does this also zoom? Yeah, nice. So these commas here, if I take them away, they are not optional. If I run this code now, I'll get a syntax error. 
And all it will say is syntax error at line one, invalid syntax. Also, the parentheses are optional, or the parentheses are not optional. If I take the parentheses away, I also get invalid syntax. Sometimes what will happen with my students when they program is they start programming and they have something like this and something's a little wrong and then they'll maybe try to fix something and then they'll fix one problem and but they'll make another one and then they'll not really know what's going on and then they'll just try different stuff. Um, and as they fix one problem, they make another um, and then they wind up with different errors, which can be kind of confusing. Um, so all of these things, all of these uh, changes I'm making now are errors. So when we program, we have a, a little bit of a process of like, okay, we write some code, we try to run it. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't work, we get an error and then we try to fix it. And, and that's really a good description of programming, I think. It's this kind of circular iterative process of writing code and eventually getting a circle that works. I actually have a question. The console here, is that mm -hmm. sort of the same as the console in the web, uh, in the browser? Yep. Yeah, cool. Um, except in a web browser, maybe you'd wind up with some kind of like JavaScript console. This is a Python console, but they essentially do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've talked about that, we can do our first exercise. So to complete this next checkpoint, you'll need to click on the icon below and follow the instructions to draw the circle that is shown. When you think your circle looks the same, you can click check code that appears on the left of the run button. If your code draws the correct shape, we'll pass the checkpoint. So here we go. Time to write our first bit of code, oh boy. This is the exercise screen. Click the start coding button to see the editor where you'll write your code. The canvas on the right shows what your program will need to look like. So now on this screen, this looks a little bit different from what we've seen before. Here on the left side, we have a, a little bit bigger code window where we can write code. And here we have some comments, which are instructions like for, for humans to read every line that has a hashtag in front of it is going to be something that's not relevant for Python. Python's going to ignore all of these lines in green. And it will start with this, uh, this first line at line 10. On the right side, here we have our canvas. Underneath, we have the console. And here we can see the solution. This is what our program should look like in the end. If we click on this little toggle, my, my canvas, well, here we see the code that's actually written. So here I have circle 200, 150, 15, and this is the circle that's drawn. I can even click run to see. I can even change the size. Maybe I make it a little bigger. So this is the code that I'm writing. Oh, spoilers. I was trying to remember if it was uh, was 15. So here's the code that I'm writing. Here the radius is 30. Here on the solution, we see that the circle is a little bit bigger. So I can start this iterative process of trying to uh, trying to see, trying to match what I'm writing to the solution. So since I already uh, kind of accidentally gave this answer, we can say, uh, I can show you how I would solve this because there will be more exercise for you to solve on your own. So 30, that's a little bit too small. So maybe we can go up to something like maybe it's about 50. Uh, but that's a little bit too big. And if we do this after a while, we'll wind up with 45. Maybe I can also uh, zoom in my screen just a little bit to, uh, maybe that's a little bit better. So if I have the code circle 200, 150, 45, then that's the code that matches the solution. And for those of you that saw, or maybe you, you find this out on your own, if you move the mouse over the circle, you'll activate something called the inspector, which gives you the information that you would need. So you don't have to guess 
uh, going back and forth and kind of moving things around one or two pixels. So here, if I take the, the mouse over the circle, I can see that it's at point 200, 150. And then in the upper right hand corner, I can see that the color is black and the radius is 45. When I think this looks pretty good, I can click run, make sure that it looks nice, and then I can click, oh, let's do full screen. That's nice. Um, and then I can click check code, and then it'll give me a little star and say, good job, yippee. Back to the note. And that's the, that's the first, uh, that's kind of the first lesson. So are there any, are there any questions so far? About uh, about any of this, I it, I hope that everyone gets through the uh, gets through the exercise. Actually, if you need me to, I can uh, I can go back and show it again if if anyone's missing it. Do you have like a? <clears throat> I often feel that I forget which which one is which in the coordinate system. So do you have like a good trick for? Oh, the first one is X and the second one is Y. Practice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, yeah it, it takes a while to get the hang of this. But after you do, the more, the more practice that you get, the more training that you do, um, the easier it is. And at some point, I, I see my students, you know, they've really learned uh, how the coordinates work in the system. And, or you know they've really learned. Oh, I forgot a comma. Or they've uh, you you'll be able to see faster and faster um, what you want to make and actually how to to make it. One of the things that my students really enjoy, or that I, I've seen at my students, kind of at the end of the at the end of our programming courses, they can really like have some idea and they can think okay, I want to have a game with like a little guy that jumps from platform to platform, and then they can actually go through and make it. They actually have the digital scope on their skills to create, um, which is really cool to see. Goodness gracious. I think I, uh, I, I think I've talked for, for long enough, actually. I, I talked longer than I thought, <laughs> which is usually the case. Um, but I, I hope that it were, I hope that it's good that we went through that kind of slowly together. Um, I, I think instead of, uh, or what do you think, Carolina? Should I, should I go through this? Do you, do you think it's good to go through this next one together? I mean, I think everybody who's, um, who's here should be able to kind of work on this their own um, at the same, like pretty much the same way that I have uh, the first one. I, I don't think there's anything in here. Um, I'll, 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 I, we can go through just the beginning of this because it yeah. talks about uh, changing colors. So in the previous lesson, we saw how to draw a circle like so. Here we have three numbers. If I want to change the color of the circle, well, then, it's, then the code's going to look a little bit different. So here I'll have a circle with the three numbers that I had before separated by commas. And then we'll have something called fill. Fill is going to be the fill of the shape or of the circle. So we'll have fill is equal to blue in apostrophes. So now if I run this code, now I see that I have a blue circle. Ah, you know what? Okay, we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll go through it since we have the time. I don't need to. Uh... Ah. So our new circle uses the code fill is equal to blue, and this is this is what tells Python what color the circle is. We can change blue with many different colors, and yeah, there's a whole bunch of colors that we can use, and then we'll we'll see some examples of them now. So here we have medium sea green. Here it's a little interesting by convention, we'll have a lowercase m and a capital S and a capital G. Actually, the colors are case insensitive, so you can make all of these lowercase if you want. Um, it's up to you as a programmer. Usually these letters become capital here just to be seen a little bit easier. 
Crimson is another color we can use. We have Dodger Blue, and I think this one was, oh, I missed the middle one. But we have Hot Pink, Dark Turquoise, Steel Blue, Light Salmon, and Dark Slate Gray. So these are all uh, standard. These, these aren't just um, Python colors. These are colors in graphics programming. So that's a lot of colors. We can check out more colors in the um, docs up here. Um, that's actually really nice to say up here in the um, kind of in the menu bar, there's a, a link that we can click on that says docs and colors. I'll click on that just to show it. Um, docs and colors is a place that just has a lot of resources for um, uh, different shapes, different animations. There's a lot of stuff in here if you really uh, if you don't want to go through all of the lessons, but you just kind of want to get lots of information, um, you're welcome to browse around in here in the docs. Um, this is really similar to, I think, any software that you would use where you have some, some documentation. Um, and then here we can see that we have lots of different built-in colors. So one thing that's important to know is that we still need to have the first three numbers first, and then we have the fill. So here, if we have 200, 200, fill red 20, this is going to be an error. To fix this, we would have to have the, the 20 before the fill. Also, we need to have fill. So if we just have 200, 220 red, that's also going to be an error. So we need to have fill with lowercase and then a single equal sign. We can do some more practice. So remember that when you first open the exercise, you see the solution canvas. The code in the editor draws a different circle that, you, that you'll need to fix. So if we click start coding and we want to run, we see here we get a little bit bigger redder circle. And if we click on the solution, we want to get a, a smaller circle, which is cyan. So if I use this inspector to mouse over the circle, I can see that it's at point 200, 150. I can see that the radius is 50 and that the color is cyan. If I run now, then I can go back and forth between the solution and my canvas and see that they're that they are the, they, that they look the same. Another thing that can be a problem for those of you that continue working on this this week um, is you know the canvas will look really similar. And the solution will look, it'll look the same, but uh, for some reason it doesn't uh, auto grade correctly. It doesn't, uh, when you click check, it says that it's wrong. If we run some code that's different, um, we can wind up with this red kind of try again auto grader. Nice effort, but the fill should not be red. Uh, sometimes they can look really similar, but we'll still get this kind of red try again bar. Um, if that happens, just write in Discord and be like, hey, this doesn't work and then uh, either me or Carolina or another one of the, the people helping will, uh, will give you some help. So this part talks a little bit about the inspector, which I've already, which I've already talked about. If we mouse over even these examples, we can see the, the points and the colors and all of the, uh, yeah all of the properties or the attributes of the, of the shape. And I think maybe that's a, maybe that's good enough, uh, a good enough place to stop for, for today. Yeah. It's a really good tool for learning Python. It feels like a good way in. Yeah. And this, this resource especially is made for, um, Kind of like week-long camps or summer camps um, exactly like this mm -hmm. so this uh yeah I, I i thought i hope that it works well 
I think I'm gonna uh, stop the recording so we can ask questions.